I'm Shar Jurgensen and welcome to Inspired by Shar. Today is a very special day for me because I get to share with you one of my newest patterns known as nosegay. Also another name would be bridal bouquet. When you look at the quilt behind me you'll see that it's really beautiful in the collection that I've pulled together. The first fabric that I found was the border print. From the border print it was easy because it's from the same grouping. I chose a paisley to put in the uh, half square triangles or side triangles and corner triangles and the center block. Then in my stash I found a nice stripe that went really well with it for the basket on the bottom. The points on the bridal bouquet or nosegay are fussy cut from a beautiful border print in that collection. And then I found a nice orange to fit in here and all of that floats on a nice uh, yellow background. Linda Taylor did a beautiful job quilting this one for me. I don't know if you can see it, but she's done feathers in the basket on the bottom. It's just beautiful and then a continuous line throughout the points and then she has done a free motion meandering in the background fabric to set them off. The outside has a continuous line flowing uh, leafy pattern actually which looks really nice with the fabric. The next quilt that I'm showing was made from a very good friend of mine, Jean Johnson. And she collected a fabric that goes with this border print. Actually, I believe it's also from the same collection, all of these pieces. And she has repeated the border print in the nosegay or the basket of the pattern. And instead of putting the uh, nosegays straight up and down, she has pointed them into the center to create a different effect. She has alternated the browns and the blues throughout the points and then accented with a little peach in each of these corners. Beautifully done. And then she has quilted straight lines in here to, to bring attention more to the nosegay, also known as the bridal bouquet. Beautifully done. Actually, she's added another treatment in here, which I really like. She's put a stripe in here going um, vertically up and down, or depending on how you look at it, here it is horizontally. And then on the outside border, she's cut it on the bias for yet another effect in that quilt. The next quilt that I'm sharing with you actually is the quilt that gave me the inspiration to do this pattern. I found it in my mother's house. And I do believe that this quilt was started by my great grandmother because part of the pieces in this one are hand pieced. Then I think the quilt was finished by my grandma who sewed on a treadle machine. Actually, that's a sewing machine that I learned to sew on. Then it was hand quilted by a group of ladies and mom and grandma and great grandma all belonged to a quilting club. And I know that this would have been quilted by that group of ladies. It has been made with feed sacks that they collected in the 30s. I think it's really a charming quilt. All of the nosegays or bridal bouquets are set on a pink background. Love it. I will really enjoy showing that one. The next one that I'm showing to you is made by a quilting friend, Judy Block. Judy has done yet another arrangement with the same pattern. Instead of putting them all to the very center of the quilt, she's made clusters, actually four clusters, with the same pattern. She has added a stripe for this part of the block, and for the center ones, and then accented in the corners with an yet another pattern. On the far outside corner ones, she has combined two different prints for yet a different look. The outside border that she used was a great ending to this quilt. Again, she has quilted in stripes in this area to draw attention to the spokes of the four baskets coming together. And I think the floral border is a nice ending to this quilt. Next to my favorite ironing station by Tracy's Table, which has the beautiful surface for ironing large pieces of fabric. 
is the next quilt I'm going to show you, made by Sue Anderson. When you look at this one, you don't see the nosegay pattern, but you see the eight-pointed star. And what she has done is substituted this part of the block right in here for two more of the points of the nosegay. And then alternated with the squares in the corner to create yet another pattern with the same template shapes. The one next to it is the nosegay pattern, so you can see how the two are related to each other. She has quilted it with a plum thread, which shows up really nice against the dark blue background. These are all batiks that blend really nice with each other. Some of them she's put more contrast in, and some of them she has fabrics with all the same value, but yet nice contrast in the textures. The next quilt my friend Judy made has combined the two blocks, the eight-pointed star and the nosegay, in the same quilt. She has used high contrasting fabrics for the stars and the nosegay and separated them in the background with a little touch of green, which happens to be the same fabric that she used in the border. Then for the bottom of the basket, she's used a dark fabric, which is a nice contrast. Actually, when I've been working with this pattern, I've learned that it's important to do something really special with this part of the block. She's done a beautiful job separating all of these blocks with a narrow strip. Actually, it looks like she's probably cut that strip one and a fourth inches wide, so it ends up to be a three-quarter inch uh, sashing between each of the blocks. The outside edge of the quilt is finished off, again, very cleverly, with half of the eight-pointed star. Instead of using side triangles and corner triangles, she has filled this part out here, and the corner pieces are filled in with half of this again. A wonderful, wonderful quilt for the holidays um, that everybody enjoys every year. Before I start cutting, I'm going to show you the tools that I'm going to work with today. In front of you, you'll see seven shapes that all are used to create the nosegay pattern. The first thing that I'm going to explain to you is, is that each of them have the grain line etched in. The straight of grain is very, very important when cutting this pattern. The other thing that you'll notice that everything has a letter, so you'll know exactly how to follow the diagram and the instructions in the book that comes with the set of templates. It'll be very easy for you to follow. The next thing is that they all include the quarter inch seam allowance and they are transparent, which is a nice advantage when I start to do my fussy cutting. The last thing that I want to point out about the templates is that I have put fabric grips on the back side of them to keep them from sliding when I'm cutting. The grips come in a package like this. There are 56 of them, and you'll notice that there are two sizes, the small and the large. Depending on the size of the shape, I will alternate between those two sizes. The first cutting that I'm going to do is some fussy cutting. When you look at this, you'll see some interesting areas for me to cut from. One thing about choosing a border print, you want it to be symmetrical. In other words, equal on both sides of the pattern. What I found was that I could move this template around many different places and find yet another design. You'll see that I have already cut some of those pieces, and I'll show you how I will place them to cut another one exactly like it. But before I do that, let me show you how you can change out that pattern. If I flipped all of these like this, I would get yet another design. See how easy it is to change out that pattern? So when you're putting your block together, you have many different options 
uh, when you have fussy cut that piece. So now we have yet another design in the nosegay. And that's how I cut all of the ones in the quilt that's hanging directly behind me. Isn't that pretty? It makes a real nice uh, motif in the center. So every one of the uh, nosegays in my quilt was done that way. To get them identical to each other when I'm cutting, what I do is I lay one that I've already cut up on top of my template. Let's slide it up here. We'll go a little farther. There we have it. Do you see how this pattern goes in there? And then if I scoot this over just a little bit, now we have the perfect match. So I would cut around this shape and I would have one, mo one more point for the pattern. So that's how you fussy cut. It would be really hard to do that without the transparencies of the template. Another way to do that, if you lay your template down and cut one, you can take a grease, there's a grease pencil on the market that you can just mark over the top of your template to mark so you have that same place every time you cut. Now I do have the grain line etched in this template, but this time I'm ignoring the straight of grain because I wanted to capture that particular design in this fabric. If I was cutting another fabric, I would want the straight of grain to go the lengthwise or the crosswise grain of that fabric. So sometimes I will sacrifice the straight of grain uh, when I want to do my fussy cutting. The next pieces that I cut for the quilt would be this shape in here. It doesn't have a special name until you put the two together for the basket. That particular piece is cut from a strip so that I have the width of the strip wide enough to accommodate the length of the shape. I want the straight of grain to go in this direction. Now I will move that piece up on top of a rotating mat so it's easy to work around it. We'll lay the template over here. I want to take advantage of all the fabric that I can. And like I always do, I make my first cut going backwards. And also pay attention to the way I'm holding the cutter. I have my pointer finger up on top instead of like this. With it on top, it gives you a lot more control of your cutter. Then without disturbing my work, rotate the mat and cut your way around that shape. You really can't get any more accurate than that. So now I have the right and the left side. And that was a very important thing. I should have told you that you always want to cut these pieces with the fold because you want to have a mirror image so you end up with the right and left side. Then I would just alternate and place my template this way because I don't want to waste that fabric in there. Now if you're conservative like I am, you probably would take this template and place in here to cut because the straight of grain on this one, this one happens to be template C. The straight of grain is going this way so I could actually get one of the pieces that fits up in this part from that area. I have also cut strips for it. But do you see how nice that is? I don't have to waste any fabric. The next piece that I'm going to show you how to cut would be, and I don't really have a special name for this piece. Um, I will only refer to it by the corner unit, which has a little diagonal shape to it. It fills out really nicely in the corner. This one too has the grain line in it and I want the straight of grain of this piece to go the crosswise grain and then this is a bias edge in here. So I'm going to move it close to the end. I'll give it another cut there so I start out with a fresh straight edge. 
Another thing too, if you by chance cut your strips too wide for the actual template that you're using, make sure you take the time to trim that off. This happens to be a match here, but you want to cut your pieces exactly like the template. Remember they are drafted to go together and that's what makes them uh, so nice and accurate. Again, we will have the right and the left piece when we cut it with our fabric folded because you want to be able to turn that corner. The next part of the block is just that simple square and I think everybody understands pretty well how to cut them. I just cut the strips to accommodate that square and then lay your template up on top and you would cut around that on both ends and again if it's not quite the right width trim it up just a little bit. See what it, oh we've got another part that's really fun to do. We have the basket on the bottom. Isn't that interesting what that stripe will do to create yet another effect? It acts, adds a lot of interest to it. This is the way it's done. See I didn't want to waste this little bit of fabric here. So I go up to the cut that I had already made. Now I am not paying attention to the straight of grain. See here's the straight of grain line, but because I wanted this pattern in here, I have sacrificed the straight of grain. Now if I was cutting from a different printed fabric, I would definitely take advantage of using that straight of grain. Again, showing you how you can get the right and the left side of the basket using stripes. The center square is a 10 inch uh, finished block or a 10 and a half inch square and that matches the size of the nosegay. So you have a 10 and a half uh, inch square before you sew them together. The corner triangles are cut from squares. I have two squares that are 7 and 15 16 inch squares to start out with and I want to cut them diagonally so that the straight of grain is on the outside edge of the corner and then this will end up to be the bias edge here. So I'll place those two squares on top of each other and then I'll line up the ruler with this point down here and then we'll match the other point and we'll make a diagonal cut We now have the four corner triangles that we need to make this project. So there they are like that. Always having the bias edge in here and the straight of grain on the outside corners. The next piece that we're going to cut is the side triangles that go here, here, and on all four sides. That square is cut 15 and 3 8 inches uh, in size. So it is a perfect square. Now on this one I'm going to cut diagonally in two directions right through the middle. So we'll match up to that corner first. And then without disturbing that square, we want it to be accurate. Turn your board. And now find the two other corners and make sure everything is still lined up. It's a good idea to check twice and cut once. Because this would be a large piece of fabric uh, to waste. Now I bumped it just a little bit so I'll make sure I get it right. Now we have four identical side triangles and these then 
have the straighter grain on the outside edge and this is your bias going in two directions. So that is your side triangles, corner triangles, and the center square that connects the blocks together. I hope you've enjoyed watching me cut the nosegay today. Now it's time to put it together. <music>